Based on data from the USDA, we can see that the average daily calorie intake per person has increased from about 2050 to 2500 calories in a 40 year time span. Although many variables influence your calorie intake, the increased availability of palatable and processed foods probably plays an important role in this calorie increase. As shown in a 2019 study, consuming processed foods makes it easier to overconsume calories compared to eating whole foods. This is because processed foods are usually less filling per calorie consumed. But most of us already know that moderating junk food consumption and eating more whole foods is beneficial. Why is it still so hard to control junk food intake when the cravings come up? In this video, I will discuss the science behind junk food consumption. You will have a better idea of why junk food is sometimes hard to resist and how you can better cope with junk food cravings. But first, let's get a clear definition of what junk food actually is. For simplicity's sake, let's define junk food as packaged or processed foods high in calories and low in nutritional value. So think about foods like potato chips, chocolates, sugary beverages, and biscuits. These foods provide plenty of calories but with little satiation and not many micronutrients. Now, if you have an overall nutritious diet and control your calorie intake, having some junk foods from time to time is fine. There needs to be a balance. I am definitely not saying that junk food is always evil and should be avoided all the time. However, if you experience a lack of control when it comes to junk food consumption, then we need to look into how you can change that. The availability and ease by which you can get junk food has increased over the past decades. Food companies invest a lot to market their snacks. In 2014, food companies in the US spent about $1.3 billion on advertising food snacks. But perhaps more important than the marketing is the way most of these junk foods are engineered. There is a science behind making junk foods hard to resist and easy to overeat on. I would like to share with you four food science principles that many manufacturers use to make their foods very tasty. First, we have the emulsion theory. It is oftentimes not a single ingredient that makes a food very tasty. For instance, you do not crave just salt or just sugar. It's oftentimes the combination of these foods together what makes a food hard to resist. Specifically, the combination of fat and salt or sugar and fat is often seen as pleasant by the brain. A lot of thought goes into getting the right combination of fat and sugar or fat and salt in order to make a food very tasty and easy to eat a lot of. Related to the emulsion theory is the theory of dynamic contrast. It usually is harder to resist a food if it has dynamic flavors. It is hard to get bored of a certain food if every time you take a bite, there is a slightly different taste response. This is why foods like cream-filled pastries or richly filled pizzas are so satisfying to the taste buds. Another principle food manufacturers often use is related to vanishing energy density. Many snacks have in common that they rapidly melt in your mouth. Since the foods melt in your mouth, the volume of the food becomes lower and the satiety signal to your brain is not as strong. This happens for instance when you consume ice cream. Lastly, junk food design is not just about the ingredients, but also about the experience created around the food. This is one of the reasons why in many advertisements you can see people having a good time while consuming a certain product. When you associate pleasant memories or thoughts with a certain food, your brain registers this and the next time you see the food you are more likely to desire it. So as you can see, there is deliberate thought that goes into making junk food hard to resist. But I want to emphasize that your food intake is still 100% in your control. No one can trick you into consuming more junk food as long as you have a clear will and a reason for why you don't want to consume it. To help you more effectively control your junk food cravings, I will share three coping mechanisms with you that you can use. The first coping mechanism is related to awareness. You now are aware of the fact that consuming junk foods usually does not satisfy your hunger needs. And if you know this beforehand, it usually makes it easier to resist the junk food whenever a craving comes up. You can expect to still feel hungry after eating a large amount of calories. This awareness can lead you to the logical decision that eating the junk food is not worth it. But just awareness is not enough. Most of us also tend to eat out of convenience. Sometimes it isn't the craving that causes you to eat junk food. It's simply the fact that junk food is easy to get. So the second coping mechanism is about designing your environment. 
If you plan ahead your meals and keep very little junk food in your environment, it will be relatively easy to control junk food consumption. Keep nutritious foods like fruits in a prominent place and you are more likely to opt for that instead of eating junk food. The last coping mechanism I'd like to share is called the 10 minute rule. If you really crave a certain junk food, wait 10 minutes before you consume it. If after this 10 minute waiting period you still want to consume the junk food, then have it. This 10 minute rule prevents you from taking a short term impulsive decision to eat junk food while you are not necessarily hungry. Cravings tend to come and go very quickly. Having the 10 minute rule helps you to make more rational food decisions and control your food intake better. Eventually you want to be at a place where you can fit in some snacks into your diet without going overboard, because there's nothing wrong with having a slice of pizza or a piece of pie. It's only when you cannot control the intake of these foods that they become problematic. With the information you have received today, hopefully you can better control your food intake from now on. But that's all for this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also leave me a thumbs up if you found the video helpful and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I hope to see you in the next video.